So I'm talking with Summer Shiflet, who, uh, Summer, I'm sure it's a lot to process today. Uh, let me just get your reaction, first of all, your family's reaction, your reaction to the sentence today of, of your sister. So this is the um, result that we basically have been expecting since June 9th of 2020. My mom have talked about it at length many, many times. So we knew that this was the most likely outcome the day they found the kids. Were you surprised that Lori got life in prison or was it something that you said you were kind of expecting it? Any, any surprises today? Um, not a surprise on the sentence. I mean, it's, it's very um, bittersweet because that's my sister. Um, so it's hard to know that that's the result, but I also understand it and understand that um, justice was served for Tylee, JJ, and Tammy today. Um, it's not what I want for her, but it's also fair. What were your thoughts when Lori gave her statement? It's the first time, I mean, you've talked with her occasionally over the past few years from what I understand, but first time the public has really heard from her. And uh, what were your thoughts as she as she spoke about her, her I guess, version of events or, or her... Uh, what she believes. Um, I've known she's been in this delusion for a while. It took me a long time to accept that and understand um, what was going on. I didn't, I knew something was off from the beginning, but I didn't know what, and I, I had never seen anybody with um, a delusional disorder before. I didn't know um, how to process that or what it looked like. So now that I've had more experience with it, um, that's about typical of most conversations. It's about her faith and, um, you'll see one day, um, it, there's never any acknowledgement of what actually happened. So you can't ever really get any answers. So it leads to just kind of frustrating situations. So what you heard, so sorry to cut you off. What you heard okay. today, what, what was so alarming to so many of what is she talking about? you're used to this is the Lori you've known is that what you're saying no not the Lori I've known no she was not like this before um she, I mean this didn't start I think her delusional disorder probably if we you know we've kind of backtracked it back to maybe late 2017 that maybe that started maybe early 2018 that it started um but she wasn't talking like this then there were some religious things and, but she was cherry picking what she shared with each member of the family. So it took us a long time to come together and like all talk about what we knew and what she had told each one of us. And we all got different versions. So it wasn't ever like a consistent, like everyone got the same exact information. Um, the things today, there were some things today I hadn't heard before. I'd never heard. She's never once told me that, um, she had the near death experience when she was giving birth to Tylee and left her body and saw my sister Stacy. That that has never um, been talked about ever by her with us. Um, so there were some things that were new to me today, but there were also things that I knew to be true that she was saying, like Tylee's time in the hospital with pancreatitis and um, her abuse by her father and things like that that I that I was aware of. I see. I guess I should have clarified as far as it, you're used to her talking like this over the past few years when you've had these yes. jail out calls. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So Summer, I wanted to ask you, you submitted a letter to the judge, a victim impact statement that, that mm -hmm. you didn't want read publicly. And there was some discussion as, you know, as to why, why you didn't come to speak or why the, uh, you didn't want the judge or the prosecutor to read a letter. Can you, can you address that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wasn't able to make it there in person today, and I didn't really want to have it read in by somebody else. And I know, I know from my own experience of talking, like writing to Lori or talking to Lori, um, I, I mean, I tried really hard. I begged her not to go to trial to begin with and not put everybody and herself through that. I mean, I tried everything to like reason with her even ahead of the trial. And I've known from my experience that she's not open to hearing what I'm saying. Um, she's not responsive to the things I'm saying. She's just doing what is in her mind that's real and right um, in her delusion. And so for me, I knew anything that I said there was going to fall on deaf ears for her. 
Um, I, I wanted the judge to know how I felt and it was for the judge purposes to, um, the judge's purposes in doing his sentencing and his position. Um, I wanted him to know how I felt, but I want to share about Tylee and JJ. I adore them, I miss them, and I want the world to know them. Um, I've had a very difficult couple of years of just trying to mentally grasp what's happened and trying to um, take care of myself and my family, seeking counseling and, and different avenues to try to heal um, and not and trying to stay kind of out of the public eye um, for the most part, the best that I could, because I just, it's a very difficult thing to navigate when you've never been through anything like this before. So I want to share about Tylee and JJ. They were awesome. What would you say about them? What would you, what would your statement be if you could give a statement on behalf of them? I'm happy to share a statement that my mom and I talked about, um, if you'd like to hear it. And, yeah. um, so I just want to say too, the statements given today were absolutely beautiful. Um, I learned a lot about Tammy's family and our hearts break for their family. And we also understand what they've gone through with like their division and things like that in their family. So I just want them to know like their family and all of the families that have been affected that um, by this, that they all have our deepest uh, condolences and sympathies and we grieve with you um, and are so sorry for the losses of everybody and the, the pain that everybody's gone through. Um, I think I sent you some pictures of Tylee and JJ if you want to share those. Yeah. Um, while words can't do her justice, the beautiful Tylee that we know and love shines through our poor attempts to honor her. Tylee Ashley Ryan was born September 24th, 2002, making her my almost birthday twinner as I was born September 23rd, but I was born at 11.55 p.m. So we were really close. She was a tiny baby, a little over five pounds. She had beautiful dark blonde hair. She lived um, in a different state than I did. So I didn't get to see her nearly enough. But when I did see her, she was a happy baby with beautiful pink cheeks, fierce blue eyes, and her hair had lightened to a soft golden blonde. Tylee was extremely bright and learned how to do everything. She rolled over, she walked, she talked, she read, and many other things earlier than expected. She was a darling bright baby who laughed easily, but she laughed the hardest at Colby who entertained her 24 seven. And Tylee was a little mermaid. I remember visiting her at the age of two, almost three, and she got in the pool with no floaties and swam all around the pool. She was just amazing. I have never seen another child swim that early, but she loved the water and she and Colby would swim as early as February when the water was too cold for everyone else and swim into the later winter months. And then later in life, Tylee also patiently helped teach JJ to learn how to swim when they lived in Hawaii. Tylee was extremely clever, witty, and hilarious as a little girl, even from a young age. She adored her older brother, Colby, like no other. Tylee's mother had a hair salon built into the house, and Tylee saw her mom working on lots of clients. Tylee loved to get into her mother's chair and get her hair done like a big girl. Tylee had a happy life and a hard life. She was adored by her immediate family, especially her big, big brother Colby, who saw her birth as the first step to Texasizing their family. Her hardships included her father's abuse of her and seven episodes of pancreatitis, an extremely painful disease. Each time she had an attack, she was in the hospital for 10 days and would have been longer if Lori had not advocated for Tylee with her doctors. We all went to visit her through each attack and did all we could to show her love and support. Lori did the most. She spent every night with her each time and would not eat in front of her since she could not eat or drink for at least eight days of her stay. Tylee loved Lori more than anyone. And Lori was right there to help her with her schoolwork so she wouldn't get behind, coming up with fun things that she could do and arranging visits from school friends. Lori's dedication as a mother was undeniable. Kylie was a straight A student most of her life. She did a science project that won a prize on tsunamis. She had a beautiful singing voice and was a very talented dancer. 
it was easy to see that she was a natural born performer and we loved watching her shows. Tylee learned to do expert makeup and loved trying new hairstyles. On a side note, I will forever miss hugging Tylee and smelling her hair. It always felt so good and was so soft. Tylee was very artistic. She could draw, design, do calligraphy, and also had an incredible eye for photography. Her photographs are some of our most precious treasures, especially the beautiful pictures she took of little JJ. Tylee was funny, kind, but she could also be bitingly sarcastic. She really came into her own when she turned 16. She tested out of high school at college ready levels in every subject and she got her driver's license and she took a job with my husband's chiropractic office for her first job. She had a great interest in physical therapy and enjoyed her short, short time working with patients. She was so cute wearing her scrubs proudly every week working day. And to celebrate and honor all of these accomplishments, we did an all girls big celebration for her. We had so much fun and we were so thrilled to celebrate all her little accomplishments. One of the most precious memories I have is the night Tylee spent at my house when Riley was born. I will never forget her beautiful little face and the huge tears in her gorgeous blue eyes that rolled down her slightly pink cheeks and watched her shake with emotion when Colby texted her a picture of her first little niece. She said, she is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. It was instant love. It hurts my heart so much that Riley and Ava will be deprived of being spoiled and played with by the most loving aunt they could ever have. I know how much Tylee adored Colby and JJ. I wasn't able to witness her relationships with her stepbrothers, Cole and Zach, but I know her love and respect for them was present. And when Charles was shot, she was the one who pushed her mother to tell them. Tylee was also responsible for tracking down the kennel that Charles had placed Bailey in when he left Houston so that they could bring him home. Tylee was a devout member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She had great faith in her Savior, Jesus Christ. She loved the Young Women's Program. She went to the temple frequently. The first time my daughter went through the temple, Tylee walked her through everything. It was so sweet and patient with her. Tylee and my oldest son were only a year apart and had so much fun together. They spoke fluent sarcasm together and were such good friends. My youngest son is Tylee's namesake and he loved to banter with Tylee. My children also love JJ and will ever be deprived of their special friendships with their cousins. Tylee was sensitive, thoughtful, considerate, humble, generous, caring, and tough. She would have been the best mother. She loved children. Her favorite color was a bright blue. She called it the color of Hawaii. Her favorite dessert was a no-baked cheesecake. I have yet to be able to make one without completely breaking down as I think of that precious girl. Kylie loved the shows The Office and Friends and The Bachelor and others. She loved music. She loved her friends and had so many fun times with them. Her friends truly love Tylee and will have to live with this enormous hole in their hearts and confusion as to why they had to lose their friend. Tylee loved her mother above all and was protected by her mother most of her life. We know that only the severe mental illness that her mother has would be stronger than a mother's love. Tylee and JJ both wanted to be with their mother more than anyone else. But after Lori met Chad Daybell, Tylee and sweet little JJ were served up on a platter like a lamb to the slaughter. There is no sense, logic, or explanation that will ever be satisfactory in their murders. The world would have been a better place with Tylee in it. The world would have been a better place with JJ in it. We will always be grief-stricken over her both of their untimely deaths, and we are beyond sad that they were betrayed by the very mother they loved. There are no excuses for Lori's actions regarding Tylee and JJ, but we do see that she is mentally ill. It's such a tragedy that this beautiful, bright girl and most precious little boy were murdered, but that in no way reflects on the wonderful people that they were and the many contributions they were poised to make in this world. 